So I am just on the BJJ Fanatics website, and what's amazing is now we've already talked about uh, gravity is your friend, but there are two other instructionals that you might want to talk about. Recently, I had the opportunity to work with BJJ Fanatics guy, and now we have three instructionals out there. We have escapes and engineer for guys over 40. If you're 40 or more, hey, dig into it. Gravity is your friend. Sit up sweeps. Been there for some time and is really, really getting a lot of attention. And then we have the smash the knee folding pass. Now, that's one of my favorites. So if you haven't um, looked at them, take a look. BJJFanatics.com. Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. Here we go. Squeak, squeak. Yeah, moving stuff around. <laughs> In the editing process, I'll try and clear all that out. Ah, uh, well, if you only knew a sound guy who can help you. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> Doing all this off the cuff. Yeah. Great conversation with Rick. Rick Ellis, yeah, for sure. Um, great guy. Uh, it's been around for a while. You know, um, some of these conversations are funny. Some of them are good, like a good conversation. And some yeah. of them are just deep. Yeah. They're just deep. Where did this one fall for you? A deep. Yeah. It was bit. deep. Like, I, I think it was, there was some good stuff in there. Like, mm -hmm. it, it really made me think. You know, like it, it really, I had to reach back to the back of my skull to dig information out and <laughs> really process. You deep, are you even paying attention to what yeah, we're doing? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> I'm reading the actual definition of, of our topic. Today. Tribe. Of tribe. And yeah. what does it say? Well, I don't like the first three words, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. You know, but a social division in a traditional society consisting of families, communities, linked by social, economic, religious, blood ties. Mm -hmm. It goes on from there, right? Yeah. Uh, typically having a recognized leader. Ooh. Um, but why were we talking about tribes? Um, I think it was because we're often, why do people seek out jujitsu, I think, is one of the things. Um, and People are looking to belong to something, right? And they find themselves when they get into a jujitsu academy and they do it for any length of time, I think they become part of that community, which can be broken down into tribes. If you think about it a little bit or a little more abstractly. Yeah. I mean, I think community by definition could be considered as a tribe, right? It's just a group of people who have a common, common goal. And, um, you know, in, in jujitsu's case, it would be sharing struggles and, you know, developing trust between each other. I think Sanji was talking about this episode on his episode. The reason why we we develop such a strong bond between people is because we develop that trust. I mean, we literally put our lives in somebody else's hands, you mm -hmm. know, and, and by doing so really we we not only become peers on the mat, but often it is breaches outside of the mat, you know. It's like we even recently talked about how many people do you know out off the mat, like outside of jujitsu, you know, circle. And honestly, I don't know many. And um, you know, so that tribe factor, I think, is extremely important for every academy, you know. And that could come in very in various shapes, sizes, and, you know, flavors and, yeah. you know, whatever that means. But right. whatever chemistry is at the academy, that's that's the direction that that academy and that tribe, that community will aim towards. Yeah, and I think that um, it's not it, – it also represents that academy too. Well, it's yeah. Not, you know what I mean? It's not just what you're looking for or heading towards – but it's a it's an outward representation, and I, when I uh, we won't mention any names, but when I was looking for places to start, uh, I was given a few options, and in the descriptions that people gave me of some of those places, it was like I don't even need to try that place, I don't even need to go over there because I know that that's not going to be for me based on the reputation it has. Now, should I maybe be a little less? Um, 
reliant on others and, and seek it out for myself. I don't know, but it's like, that's not going to be the community that I want to be a part of. But right? even if you look at it, forget about jujitsu for a second and academies. Like mm-hmm. if somebody tells you, a friend of yours, good friend of yours tells you, listen, I went to blah, blah restaurant. It was phenomenal. Right. You likely not even go to Google and read the reviews mm-hmm. because you trust that person. And that person just gave a high recommendation of that place. You are more likely to actually visit that place without doing any investigation whatsoever. Right. And I think similar factors are taking place in jiu-jitsu because it is a physical contact sport. It is, we are putting ourselves in compromised positions. And more importantly, if you're just starting, you will be exploring something brand new that you've never done before. So you're looking at a clean place. You are looking at a trusted place. You are looking at a place that runs things operationally sound. You you want a responsible and professional people there. You All that creates a perception and that's a big word but it creates a perception the perception not necessarily is a reality it's what's being viewed by others and that is how people what will people see mm-hmm. so managing that and really creating a correct perception for people to see what you are all about is really important because even look even like i'm going to deviate for a little bit from this but even if your perception is not true to what really is represented at the academy, people will come. They will they will mm-hmm. be invited in by nature of what they want. But the moment they learn you there is a misrepresentation of what they heard versus what is really happening, they're not gonna stay. Mm-hmm. So them coming in is completely useless. You know what I mean? So you know this tribe, this community, the culture, you know, whatever word you want to use, we're referring to the same thing. It's a group of people with a common with a common goal, mm-hmm. you know, and how that is representing out to the outside is important for it to be true. And then that's that's the people that you will attract in. And now in order for them to not only begin, but then continue practicing, that has to translate into what they are looking for. Mm-hmm. And that's how we build the team. Well, why the do tribe, we, the why do we need it? Why do we seek it out? Why do we need the, the, to belong to something? I think I mean, ninety nine point nine percent of the population has a family. They have friends. They have a circle of some sort. But then we go out and we look for these other things. As humans, I think we are creatures of tribe. You know, and and you can look at this as several. I actually read a book about this, but you can look at this as several examples. Uh, one. Um, is I went to the same high school. Boom. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't know those people. You don't. But the moment you find out that they went to the same class, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, you know so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. That's a, that's a small example. You know, here's another one. You, you are in Paris. You're in France, and you see American. You have no idea who they are. How do you tell? Why? Because they, <laughs> because they are rejected. Uh, <laughs> because, all the, because all the people in Fr- in France are looking at them funny. <laughs> but the disgusted. moment you find out there's somebody's from the same country, you naturally gravitate towards them because you have a common point of interest, and that's your home country. Yeah. Same thing comes from your state. Same thing comes. You talk about high school, but it, yeah, you you you, you can t- you you can literally put this everywhere. Oh, you drive the same car. I used to have this car. I love the car. Boom, conversation starts. Mm-hmm. You know, and this can be taken anywhere and everywhere. And I think it's magnified in jujitsu because we embrace the grind. It's complex. It's hard. We we grind again, and then we're putting ourselves in compromised positions and. I just look at the cameras with a fear that we are not recording this. <laughs> <laughs> but we embrace. Sorry, this, we are. We embracing the grind and we putting ourselves in these compromised positions. And more importantly, more trust we develop between the peers, between each other, more we can learn because now we are more open minded. Well, that and I? But does, I think it might serve an even baser purpose of. You know, you just said trust, right? We put ourselves in this compromised position. And we're putting our putting trust in our training partner. Um, I think that knowing that you can trust people on a very base level is helps you feel protected and help yeah. right. Yeah. And I, we put ourselves in these tribes, whether it's on the mat or, or outside of jujitsu. But you put yourself in because you feel safe. 
yeah. you feel protected. We're, you know, Rick brought up the point that, you know, we're probably hardwired for it because if, if we ran into another tribe and we didn't belong to one, there's a good chance you're going to get wiped out. You know? Yeah, I think this goes back to the, you know, cave stone ages where, you know, groups competed against the groups and, you know, but you don't have to look far. Like you, we got tribes that like we yeah. compete against each other, you know, whether they're teams, you know, or clubs that you belong to. You know, I think in jujitsu, it's a little bit, there's a lot of gray area there, but it, it's still very present in our life where we compete, you know, our high school teams, our school teams or whatever. Like we compete. All the team sports are competition between two because they are two different tribes. And it's like, why? Did, why is it that, you know, I don't know. Nobody owns Chicago Bears jersey, but uh, but you, you know what I mean. It's like you have this, you're part of the tribe, you're part of that group, and you might not know them personally, but the fact that they have the same jersey as you just makes you part of the same tribe. Isn't that interesting? The trust, the trust as an in, individual person is weaker than... The common denominator could be as a jersey. <laughs> Think about yeah. that for well, a moment. Yes. Think so about you don't. That. Yeah. You, so you're a fan of the shirt. You're not really a fan of the team. Well, right? but but that that's that magnifies the power of the tribe. Think about it. If yeah. that same person was not wearing that jersey, would you approach them? Like that's the million dollar question. Likelihood is not. Right. But because they or do, do have you, it, how do you approach them if they're wearing a Green Bay? Or jersey, if they right? wear the opposite jersey, what well, <laughs> yeah. what does even worse, right? Uh -huh. But like, it is such an interesting topic, in my opinion. Like, we can simply make a judgment who they are or what mm -hmm. they represent mm -hmm. just by looking at them without even knowing them. Yeah. And the trust factor, the trust switch, instantly goes on. You know, it, it's I, in my mind, it's blowing, mind blowing. Uh, it's very, it's it's. It is very, it can be very, it's very simple, yet at the same time, it's very complex underneath when you start trying to yeah. dig out why we seek it out, why we need it, you know, how, is is it something that goes back centuries, you know? Um, well, there's like the three things that every student is afraid of, right? Being hurt, being embarrassed, and being, being wrong, wrong, right? If you're part of the tribe, you avoid all three of them. Somebody wow. in your tribe would not intentionally hurt you. They will not make you embarrassed. I mean, those are the principles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, once you're well established in that tribe, they make you embarrassed for sure. It's a, it's, it's a goal of some, some but, people. But yeah, well, that's you know what I'm it, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just but, but 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 I think those are the at the very base level of human operation. Those are the factors that we are seeking. We don't want to be hurt. That that's that's the physical protection that we're trying to generate be in front of us and in front of our well, kids. Well, it's security. It's yeah. security. It's and and right because physical security, mental security, or stability maybe. Yeah. Um, that you need these things in order to function. Yeah. And if you don't have them, it becomes extremely hard to function yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, and when people aren't part of something, I think part of something growing up. Um, I think it it really bot it really it, um. What's the word I'm looking for? You you become very stagnant in your growth, right? Mm -hmm. Now now and you can get too deep and dedicated to a tribe and become stagnant too. But I think that if you're not exposed to things, um, and find those commonalities with other people as you're growing up, once you hit a certain point, you're that is going to – it becomes harder to find, harder to achieve. You know, and you see – when you see an adult come in here who's terrified to walk through the door of an academy, um, they're probably terrified to walk through the door of a L.A. fitness. They're probably terrified mm -hmm. to walk through the door of a music school. They're terrified of – because they haven't – they d haven't had those tribal experiences – at a very at a younger age, they've played it safe or they've been kept safe. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's why you know the culture within the academy is one of the most important things that you know one can do or have, you know, to really truly benefit from the experience that they they are they they are getting, you mm -hmm. know, from jujitsu and you know, obviously skill set wise as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think you should have different tribes, have different 
You know, you well, have jujitsu. I know diversity, it can only, diversity, right? The diversity yeah. allows us to grow as humans, right? And yeah. I think this is that very slippery slope when we get into these quote unquote tribes and we hardcore believe into one thing, but we are so close minded to lis- even yeah. listen to something else. Yeah. Well, this then is you, where it becomes very dangerous. Yeah. And, and it becomes cultish, cultish at that point, yeah. right? It goes from a tribe to a cult um, fairly. Well, I shouldn't say fairly easily, but there's there's those there's cult-like a fine line. behaviors, you know, that can that can interrupt um, or intervene quite quite rapidly yeah. too, you know, if yeah. you're not looking out for them. So. Yeah, definitely interesting topic. Interesting. All right, all right. Are we done? Let's rattle. Let's wrap this up for today. All right, then I'll talk to you soon. Later, peace. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.